So what we're asking um, the rural community to do is to start taking some action. This is Fire Action Week, and what we want here is the things that you can do to prevent the fire. It's too late once it's started, but there's a lot we can do to prevent it. The process itself, as I said, is, is chemical and mi microbial, but we can defeat that by a couple of reasons. First thing, prior to baling the hay, that moisture contents are, mo are monitored, that we know where hay has come from if it's been purchased in from outside, that we know the history of it, that it's looked after from almost from the cradle to the grave. So out in the paddock, if we've had a lot of uh, rain, then maybe the baling needs to hold off until the moisture content is lower. If it's been subject to inundation through um, flooding, then be very careful about baling it. In the shed, protect it, but also give it some airflow. Now this particular stack here is a bit of an example, but we've got an air gap up the top which will allow some airflow through the, the shed, but we've got some segregation so that if a bale is protected to be heating, that we've got a chance of getting in and doing something about removing the good hay and preventing the whole lot from going up. And the thing we're looking at is the bar driven well into the haystack and left there. Leave it there for two hours um, and pull it out and there's sort of a, some rules of thumb. If you can handle the crowbar quite reasonably, it might feel warm because there will always be heat in a haystack, but um, if you can handle it reasonably, that's probably pretty good. If the thing's too hot to handle when you get out, you've got a problem. But the other thing is don't do it in just one location. Multiple locations across the stack, deep into it, between bales, between joins in bales, even in bales if you can do it. And quite often the problem's inside the bale itself, and particularly with large squares, they're very compressed and uh, the heating can happen inside them. Well, it's been there for a couple of hours. Uh, all cool, Peter, so we're, we're pretty safe at this stage. That's good, that's the way we like it. Yeah. Now CFA have a publication called On the Land, which talks a whole raft of um, fire safety advice which we can give farmers and all the And that's available from CFA district offices, from fire stations, and um, even more suppliers. And we recommend that uh, a lot of people get hold of one of these and uh, read the contents. <laughs>